So here at Hoya Compacta uh, Variegata or Regalis, and there's a beautiful spider here that I keep chasing. It's running around so fast around the plants, and it's feeding uh, on pests most likely. And again, these plants are very very susceptible to mealybugs, so I really welcome the spider. It's just jumping off. I can't catch up with it. It's so fast. It's just so beautiful. Anyway. Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a house plant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I also care for different plant species, propagate them, and share my experience with you here on YouTube. So if you're into that kind of videos, please do consider subscribing to my channel and send this video a like. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the Hoya Carnosa Compacta, also known as the Hindu Rope. And I apologize for the construction noise, it's going at full speed, but we have to continue making content. So we can't wait for them to quiet down, so yeah, I apologize for that. But uh, the Hoya Con Carnosa Compacta is actually a pretty difficult plant to have around. It's very complicated in the care. So if you're a beginner with Hoyas or with house plants, I definitely recommend to start with the more basic Hoyas, like the regular Hoya Carnosa or the Hoya Pubicalix. And those are much easier to care for. So without further ado, I'm going to dive into the care and then later on the propagation of this plant. So this plant is uh, originates from East Asia. So this plant likes to be in bright, bright light. It likes to be in uh, bright indirect light and some direct sunlight. And if you put them in lower light, it will give you some yellowing leaves that may fall off. So that's a really good indication of uh, low light. And also if you overwater it, it may yellow up uh, and, and rot basically. So uh, in terms of watering, the, these plants actually they are quite adaptive. So it depends on how they are grown. I have some that I, I've, I will show you later that I've grown uh, from propagate and actually water it every day and it's actually fine. It's doing really well. But for the most part, for, for most of you who are bringing it home from the nursery, these plants actually cannot be overwatered. They do want to be dried out a bit between watering. I would treat them more like a succulent. And sometimes if when they're thirsty, you can actually see that their leaves will start getting a little bit more soft and you can see the slightest uh, wrinkles on the texture of the leaf. That's uh, the, the best time to water it uh, on the safe side uh, because this plant is actually very, very prone to overwatering and they will rot for you if you overwater them. Uh, the care for it indoors and outdoors is very different. Uh, when it's outdoors, the evaporation rate is higher. You can actually water it a little bit more frequently. But when kept indoors, this plant uh, needs to be watered a lot less because they, again, they're very, very susceptible to rot when there's not uh, good airflow around them. And I also find that when they're grown indoors, they're very, very prone to mealybugs and other pests because I guess number one, they're probably a little bit stressed out. And number two, there's a lot of crevices around this plant that will allow the pests to live and thrive without you detecting it. So yeah, and I do notice a lot of spiders and other predatory uh, insects that are feeding on the pests that, around this plant, which, which suggests that if you keep this outdoors, uh, the natural predators would keep the pests at bay. I actually fertilize this plant regularly, just like any other house plants. And uh, I use some slow release fertilizer. I do uh, fertilize it with chemical grow more fertilizers now and then. And I actually did not repot this guy uh, because I got this from the nursery. I bought this pretty big already. I believe it was around 250,000 Indonesian rupiah, which was a steal. And this was purchased right before the pandemic, so the prices hasn't soared yet. It's very difficult to find one this size nowadays. And actually, they can get huge. I've seen like really, really big ones. Like they can get like, I don't know, like it can grow from the roof of the house all the way down to the floor. That's just how big they can get. Uh, but they are incredibly, incredibly slow growers. Uh, you do need to give them very good light in order for them to push out new growth. So you have to be very patient with this um, particular species. And uh, the reason why I'm filming this today is because this one is flowering. <laughs> it's given me two flowers here and a, th a third spike coming along the way. And this plant actually, the, it smells slightly uh, sweet, uh, the flower. I'm not very good at describing scent because I, as you know, I'm a natural soap maker, so I'm usually bombarded with aromatherapeutic uh, scents that my nose is a little bit desensitized to smell. I see a red ant here. Hello. <laughs> so yeah, the flowers are really beautiful. They're they are like spherical in shape and it's got these really cool uh, fine hairs, beautiful pinks. I almost want to hug it. It's like a plush toy. <laughs> I'm really, really delighted with the, the blooms. It's, this is actually the first time it's bloomed for me in the nine months that I got it. So yeah, I guess um, I have a feeling that the reason it bloomed was because it started raining really, really heavily. 
uh, and the night temperatures have dropped a little bit so that's perhaps why it's bloomed because we just <laughs> Hoyas actually bloom for different reasons uh, depending on the species and no one can really explain what causes them to bloom so I would just be patient treat them with kindness treat them with patience and good care and they will usually bloom for you at some point and this uh, plant actually comes in a variegated form I'm gonna get it for you hang on one second so these are the variegated uh, version of this plant they come in two forms this one in my hand is actually the Hoya uh, it's the Hoya Hindu rope it's the Hoya com it's the Hoya compact it's the Hoya carnosa compacta regalis because the variegation is on the outside but there's another even more rare one where the variegation is on inside and the green is on the outside and I don't remember what it's called I'm so sorry but the new the ver the variegated ones are really cute because they come up with these beautiful pink new growths that will turn into green and white later and they're quite expensive and they actually are the same care and the same propagation although I do find that they they can burn up a little bit easier in a little bit of direct sunlight as you can see from here and I actually bought this plant as one plant but I, I don't know why it was str really stressed out here uh, as you can see there's a little bit of yellowing so I, before it died I ended up just cutting it up and then sticking that uh, tip into another pot and it's now grown there's so many new growth points here I see like two to three new growth points uh, they're very very slow at growing this is about seven or eight months old and this is all that is grown for me but uh, I noticed with these plants they actually grow exponentially that means that if you have a plant that's already this size it will grow pretty fast for you compared to like a baby cutting the baby cutting does take a while to take a root and to establish and to start pushing out growth also I did notice uh, that when you take a cutting from a really mature plant such as this one and you propagate it um, the cutting will also root faster and it will push out leaves faster maybe because it's a little bit more mature it's got a lot of energy stored in them so yeah without further ado I'm gonna talk a little bit about the propagation it's super easy you propagate this the same way as your other Hoya uh, I actually did a video on these before but it was mixed with other species so you would basically uh, take a tip cutting of this plant you cut it off maybe you'll take off the bottom two leaves and then you can either root that, um, just plop it in. Hang on, something's poking my butt. <laughs> it's this moss pole behind me. Uh, so you uh, take off the lower leaves and you can either root them in water or in my experience, they do root better <laughs> fern. This is the fern roommate. It's a stowaway that came with the plant. And I see two or three different species in here. And I let them live together because they're, they look so nice. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. I did notice that they do better when you propagate them directly into uh, potting mix um, so you just take the cutting it look it's gonna look like a tulip where there's some leaves on top and you just cut the bottom you only need this portion of the bare stem stick it in the potting mix and just water it like you would with any other house plants and it will just root in no time uh, I'm gonna show you some examples later so you know what I'm talking about oh yeah and I find that they can tolerate a huge variety of potting medium uh, I have these grown in uh, general purpose potting mix so that this actually dries out really fast and I do have to water this every day when it's living outdoors and this one is actually in a very barky sort of mix and this one I find it's a little bit more thirsty I do need to water this once or twice a day um, so depending on your medium that you have available to in your area you can use a lot of uh, different potting mix however if I can just choose one I would definitely recommend a combination of my aerate potting mix which dries up pretty fast and it's chunky and I feel like this is a plant that would want to grip onto the, the medium uh, which the coconut chip will help them do and I would combine it with a plastic pot because they do uh, retain slightly uh, a bit of water so you don't have to constantly water it every day but just be mindful that plastic and terracotta pot makes a huge difference in your watering frequency so without further ado I'm just gonna go and show you some propagates that I've done so here's some of the cuttings that are around six months old if I'm not wrong I believe that, uh, that some of these were actually propagated in water first and then put into potting mix but um, I don't know which one is which anymore but as you can see they're all doing quite well this one is actually putting out a new uh, growth they're very very slow to grow I did lose one plant on, on, I'm gonna be very honest with you I don't know what happened to this one uh, but the others they're healthy this is actually a new leaf and uh, as you can see I have a lot of different types of media this one is in uh, terracotta pot and uh, 
steroid potting mix. This one's in a terracotta pot and a general purpose. This one's in a plastic pot with a general purpose, which means that this is actually pretty soggy wet all the time. But here's what I noticed about plants is that when you propagate them in the media, they will adapt to that media. They may not be the happiest, <laughs> but they will uh, live. And in fact, if I started to underwater this plant, it may suffer because it's used to that moist environment. So, you know, when you're thinking about repotting your plants, you know, just be careful. If I was going to repot this guy, I would actually uh, let their media be a little bit more uh, wet for a while and then I would slowly back off watering over a period of two months to let it uh, get used to the drying out period. And it will appreciate the drying out period because in nature they are not grown in wet, plastic, uh, soggy soil. So yeah, I may have, um, you know, have to repot this at some point in the future but for now I'm just gonna leave it be. Uh, yeah, and they put out really, oh, I see some webbings here, but I don't think these are spider mites. There's a lot of predatory uh, uh, bugs around here and I believe this is probably one of them. I don't see any little dots. So the difference between spider mites and regular spiders is that spider mites are, um, they, they're in colonies so you see a lot of little dots and spiders, well, they're just one spider usually. Uh, so yeah, I guess this is all I have to share with you about this species. They're very, very easy to care for. They are easy to propagate. They just take their own time. So you have to be very patient with them. And yeah, so I guess you guys are staying safe. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm at Botanist on Instagram. If you want to DM me on any questions regarding plant care and propagations, I will try my best to get back to you. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. Bye.